Thank you. All right, we're calling the meeting to order at 16, 1802. South County EMS on January 3rd, 2019. Yeah, good. Start with a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Motion. No second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The Zach report? The Zach report. Who's our new member? This here is That's our new old member. Matthew Russo. We who um, wants to do the honors? I don't know if it's official yet. Not official until our second meeting. Oh July, really? July I mean July. January 9th. It's next week, right? Next week. Welcome okay. back ahead of time. Thank you. Well, so we have we have a quorum then. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not a voting member. But right. But we have a quorum. <clears throat> yeah. There's four of us. Okay. Nobody knows if Jonathan's coming or I didn't hear. I'll, I'll text him. I, he is usually good about telling me when he won't be present when I send out the minutes and stuff, and I didn't hear from him, so. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I listened. He missed last month too, so. Well, we'll start with the uh, report. The Zach report. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Is right off the bat. Uh, the Inky Candle annual public safety donation so they alternate um, for the communities that they have facilities and employees in which is Deerfield and Waitley um, giant novelty check yeah they, uh, <laughs> they alternate between police EMS one year and then the fire departments the next year so this was our year um, very generous three thousand dollar donation and um, uh, they laugh me out of the bank every time it doesn't fit in that suction tube thing that goes up <laughs> um, uh, that uh, our plans for that will be for the incidental stuff that isn't included in the cost of our next truck replacement so the IV warmers or, or equipment like that that's worn out that we can't transfer from the old truck so things that aren't included in our budget for that um, uh, Yankee Candle donation will cover uh, uh, also uh, the Channing Beat Company right up the road here in Deerfield um, gave us um, annual donations for both 2018 and for tax reasons 2019 before the first of the year um, which totaled two thousand dollars and that will be going to new uniform items and department branded clothing for our members so this is the type of stuff um, either early replacement for stuff or for our 30 something per diems um, stuff that will help identify them also uh, boost morale things like that so um, we're thankful to Channing Beat for that and uh, we've also received numerous uh, generous uh, donations. Coming, by the way. Great. Um, <coughs> numerous generous donations recently from local families um, of people that we've cared for. So in the interest of confidentiality, I'm not going to rattle off names here in this meeting, but um, those donations were very generous. And those things, that those monies, we put back to the staff. So those will go towards... Um, making this place more comfortable for the staff in between calls you or have a rough idea on the dollar amount for that uh well uh i can get a total in cash we've also received a lot of gift cards recently to local restaurants which will help you know we'll, we'll go to buy food <coughs> for the staff mm -hmm. while they're on duty and and other like in-kind donations and stuff like that so we, we can, send everybody thank yous or absolutely yes yeah, absolutely thank you sir. um so we're, we're very thankful for that <coughs> All right, uh, end of the year uh, report. We've got 12 months of data because there's nothing like statistics. Um, well, let's see, every year we've seen an increase in call volume and 2018 to compare to 2017, we saw a 13% increase. So we assessed um, or responded to <coughs> a total of 1,194 patients in 2018 so that doesn't capture times that we might have been dispatched and canceled or fire standbys or things like that these are just individuals that we assessed and cared for um, of those 1194 patients 65 percent so 774 were transported to the hospital um, the rest either refused care or didn't need care and of the ones that we transported 73 percent required and received advanced life support interventions from our paramedics. So 
That's 73% that that 774 patients received a level of care that before South County EMS, they would have had to have waited for personnel to come from Northampton or Greenfield or something like that. So they were able to get it right away. Um, and just recently, in fact, uh, at the end of December, we're putting in for save awards, uh, but we responded to a chest pain call in town. Our ambulance was on scene within five minutes and the patient uh, suffered a cardiac arrest in front of our paramedics and they were able to start CPR, give medication, shock his heart, bring him back to life and he is discharged from the hospital um, with apparently no deficits. So um, yeah, a real so testament wonderful. to- That's what um, it's all about. Yeah, yep. absolutely. That is, that's wonderful. Um, the annual award ceremony is May, I believe, the award nominations have to be in by March. I'll have a date and a location for that, but we're expecting um, some nice celebration there. Uh, let's see. Uh, in the last year, we also provided 59 <coughs> ALS intercepts to other agencies. So those are times where um, another agency was responding with a basic life support crew. They asked for paramedics to be available. And these would have been times where MedCare or the, the other paramedic service that normally offers that uh, wasn't available. Um, and that 59 times really is like three or four times a month. And then we had two months, August and December, um, where we responded a significant amount of times just a result of their troubles up there. Um, we've since seen those requests drop off precipitously. I reminded um, our dispatch center and our neighboring communities what our policy is regarding intercepts. Everybody's on board. We're tackling it at a, um, a county level and Western Mass EMS level. And I've been in discussions with our medical director yesterday about what what plans for the county are occurring, either North County or West County. So what are the plans? Well, everybody's buzzing about regionalization because it makes so much sense. Um, <laughs> My answer was everybody who was keen on the idea has already done it. Um, everybody else, I think, is probably seeing the writing on the wall now. They and wanted to see if it was going to work. First. Yeah, maybe. Um, um, things are really coming to a head. AMR has taken over for MedCare and Greenfield. Uh, competent providers, large corporation, they have um, a lot of economy of scale, uh, but there's always going to be those those like trouble finding your sea legs when you take over a operation. So um, I've been in contact with them and uh, we'll see where the dust settles on that. And wrapping out those statistics um, of our 1,194 patients, um, 1,020 of them, 85% were in Deerfield, Sunderland and Waitley. Um, the remaining 173 patients were people that were mutual aid calls. So to Conway, to Hatfield, to Greenfield, to Amherst, when their ambulances were all out and not available. Um, 70 something to Greenfield. Something like that, yeah. I think we got the full breakdown on another page, I think. Yeah, many, 76 to Greenfield. How many to Conway? How many to Conway? 32. 32 times. Um, that's pretty consistent looking, well, consistent in 2017 it was 30, um, 2016 it was half that, so. I'm just curious how many total runs do we think Conway has in a year across the board? And what percentage are we picking up? Because if you think about yeah, Conway and Whitley right. being roughly the same size. No. Well, uh, Conway's a little bit bigger, but not much. <laughs> I want to say just over 100 or 150. I don't know where I'm coming up with that number in my head, so it's either accurate or it's not. But I have to check. Um, how's that for a disclaimer? Um, Population-wise, are they similar to what Whitley's got? But it's probably bigger by 300. All right, so if you use Whitley's numbers on ambulance calls, exactly probably close. Yeah. So, well, Whitley has really jumped. I mean, we had... On this report here, 172 calls. That's a lot for West Wade. Wow. Yeah, we normally week. get 120. Right. Yeah. All, all the years, you know. I mean. Well, wait. We week. build it in the 174. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking at that breakdown, just it's divided by census areas. So there's a Waitley and there's a West Waitley. One concern um, I have uh, though is um, when you guys are in Greenfield. I mean, yeah. within the last month, I know of two calls 
Yeah. We had Northampton ambulance have yep. to come to Waverly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and and I, I'm hoping this is not a trend starting to go to It's not. And that, that. I realize AMR taking over Medicare was a. AMR took over from Medicare on the 16th of December. <clears throat> in the 10 days following their takeover, compared to November, we had a 250% increase in our mutual aid calls to Greenfield. Um, by the end of that week, it was like seven days in or something, I called up and I was like, this, like, this, is, this doesn't work. This isn't sustainable. We're not staff. We're not funded to be subsidizing AMR's operation. Um, you need to get your butt in gear. I called the regional director of AMR who was like, well, my understanding is everything is fine up there. And I said, well, you should call up and see. Um, after my conversation with him about that, we stopped getting called to Greenfield. Um, and my understanding is they were moving resources up from Springfield to Greenfield. Um, we haven't seen a sustained increase in call volume. I, we haven't gone to Greenfield for a while now. I'd have to check, but it's not like it was right after their takeover. So well, this weekend you were there. We yeah. Were there um, the, like I said, we're going to see where the dust settles. We are always available for mutual aid. Um, just because if that person needs an ambulance and, and no ambulance is en route, that's, that's how we stay afloat, everybody. Um, we are only available for intercepts um, and second paramedic calls um, if we have basically two full crews on duty at a time. So the rule is we will only accept that mission, that request, if it doesn't leave us depleted here. Um, and we call up to control every day. We tell them our status, how long our, we're available for. Um, and between those windows is the only time that they're going to be calling us for intercepts and second medics. So, so Zach, I guess I'm looking at this from a little different perspective, and some of you can probably figure out what that perspective is. I, I'd be curious what our response time was to Conway and what value they get out of our response time. Mm -hmm. Because if, it, and again, Conway's a big town. And, yeah. And there are parts of it that are, you know, if you're going spread over, out everywhere, you're spread out. But <clears throat> you know, there are parts of Conway. I'm, I'm wondering what our response time is and whether that's a conversation that's worth having. If, again, under the concept of, of the four towns work together in so many ways anyway. I don't know. I, I know that they've talked about regionalization. And I know they're not part of Highland. No. Nope. And I know Highland, their board and their population is tired of how many times Highland's been coming into Franklin County recently. Um, and they're not willing to sustain that either. Um, yeah, that's a good question about Conway. Geographically, usually whenever it's been mutual aid to Conway, we split it up. Either it's us if it's this end of their town sure. or Shelburne Falls. But there, there could certainly be something to be had there if they... I'm yeah. just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, doo -doo. Well, I just mentioned all that. Um, yeah. So dust is still settling. It's it's significantly better than it was even just 15 days ago. Um, but we're it's a problem, and I think people are communities are realizing that EMS coverage isn't free anymore. Um, never really was, but we were doing a good job of hiding that cost. Um, and it's just a matter of those other communities finding out what their, what their desire is. Chief, so. you, you said something <clears throat> earlier that, that resonates. I think it's, you know, we started talking about it last, last, our last meeting. Um, if, if you go, and, and I agree with what Jonathan's saying about Conway, we talked about that also. But Conway supports their ambulance system. Hackfield, you know, Amherst supports their ambulance system. Right. When we go to Greenfield and Montague, those are not being supported by their communities. Right. Those are private companies that that are operating those. In those, uh, and, and, the, and the same could be said now for Hadley with with Action Care. Those are private. So. It, 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 it's me. It's it's a very. I think it's a good point because we're, you know, in in and I I wouldn't have a problem talking to Mayor Greenville and say, hey, look, if you want us to support you, 
you know, you're going to have to, you know, you have to pony up some money to help right. pay for your EMS. Because right now they're, they're, they're not paying <clears throat> much. Mm. And, and, you know, maybe that conversation, and you're right, but m maybe it's, it's some threshold. You know, we never want to get the reputation of, 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 of turning our backs on our, on our neighboring towns. You know, the, the, shame on us. Because yeah. yeah. we, we've been there. Because we've been there, right. That being said, if a community hits a certain number, and if we did it by per capita ratios or, or whatever, whatever it is, <clears throat> then, we, then we would have data to support us saying, wait a second, that's the Tom's point. The community has to support their ambulance service because the way it's working now isn't working for them or us. But you can't say that without data. That's a good subject for the Franklin County Selectman's Association. Well, oh, yeah, we, we had, uh, and, and I, we're, uh, I, there's, a, there's a community that, that basically swapped there that now has a private provider, okay? And one of the people in the town told me, oh, $450 a run. That, that community does 1,000 runs a year, okay? They said, well, they get, 1, 000, they get a $450 a run, do 1,000 1, runs a year. And I go, that doesn't pay for the system. But I says, what do you mean? I says, simple math. Paramedic, right? 50 bucks an hour. You look at the salary, benefits, $50 an hour. Got to have two. That, so that, that's $100 an hour. 24-7, you dare 24 hours, that's $2,400. You do 1,000 runs a year, that's three runs a day. Okay? Three runs a day, $450, that doesn't equal $2,400. Not my math. I wonder whether the larger whether the larger run rates subsidize the smaller run rates for a private company. It's got to be the way it works. The economies of scale kick in so that uh, if I, you're in Sp Springfield, let's say, and you're just doing a ton of runs... Yeah, but we're talking about a, a town that's doing, they're doing a thousand runs. Right. I, I'm just saying, I don't think people recognize what EMS service costs. Oh, absolutely, I agree. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you deny services to anybody. I'm far from that, because that's why we got here to begin with. My question, my point is that the mayor of Greenfield has to understand, and, and I don't think they do right now, and the city council in Greenfield and, and, and boards of selectmen of other communities need to understand. And, and we had a talk a couple of weeks ago at uh, Franklin County. I talked to somebody that was talking about when I told them, well, someone pays sub, our, our, about 200000 Deerfield about 400000 Whiteley about 100000 Well, we don't have that kind of money. And I go, well, that's what it costs. We don't either, in theory. <laughs> But if we do, but we don't. I mean, it's, it's prioritization of your spending. Well, right. well, I think people have to know what right. it costs because it's not free. Right. And well, that's the hard part. Some of the stuff that's hidden, though, is that you the, you you lose money on your 911 calls, but you make money on those transports, and that's what they're trying to do. Is they're doing all the transports, and that's subsidizing the 911, but they're not act adequately covering all the 911s and we have to make sure we want to be good neighbors but we don't want to pick up right. their part of the 911 calls because there's huge money in the transport right and I just think that that we should be monitoring and we have these uncomfortable conversations if the number gets to a certain level where we're saying geez and I don't know what that number is. That's for the professionals who know a lot more about ambulance delivery than I do. But at some point, there's a number that, that means they're not really, truly providing the service they need to to their own community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're at, at the right. expense of our right. service delivery. Right. Well, yeah. And I think for, for that 10 days or whatever, right after AMR took over, South County was subsidizing their operation in Greenfield. And... And the plug's been pulled on that, and I think that Greenfield and the townspeople are, and it's certainly the fire department is having a come to Jesus moment, so, you know, excuse the expression, about like, oh, right, like this isn't, we're, they're, they're offering something for free and we're getting what we're paying for right now. And I don't know whether that's growing pains for AMR and it's going to settle or whether they're going to say this isn't working out for us. Yeah. Wow. In which case, if it doesn't work out for AMR, they need to go back to the communities they serve and say, we can't continue to offer this service as we have in the past. It's going to have to be a cost yeah. to yeah. help subsidize it. Right. Or, to your point with Greenfield, Greenfield Fire may have to 
put additional firefighter EMTs or firefighter medics on. Some communities have got those lower costs because they've got that blended fire EMS service. Right. And you can blur the lines between mm -hmm. fire and EMS and, you know, they probably don't operate two budgets within the department. It's one budget. And there may be medical supplies and some line items, but it's all the personnel working under one budget. Whereas the way we're structured, we're just EMS. So we get the true cost of EMS where, and I'm just throwing a name out there because they're local and they've been doing it for years, Amherst, their fire chief may have a pretty good idea of what EMS costs a department, but with the way his budget structure, does everybody else have an idea of what EMS costs a department versus firefighting activity? Absolutely. No, that's, those are perfect points. Yeah. And, and I guess that, that's my thing. For instance, if, if 10 years ago when the town of Amherst went around to the community and said, hey, we're doing a lot of your intercepts, you've got to pony up some money. Right. And everybody pushed back and said, well, what do you mean? You're getting, you're getting, you're getting the, the intercepts, you're getting this money, and you already got the people there, so it's subsidizing. Well, not really. Amherst, Amherst found out 10 years ago, because they were doing, like you said, they were doing it, that EMS service isn't free, and that you can't live by just doing runs to the hospital, emergency. Yeah. Why couldn't we enter into our agreements with whatever communities that we do serve, well, let's say Greenfield, where we're going to go to them when they call them, but we're going to charge Greenfield $750 or $800 every time we go there regardless of the insurance. If we don't get insurance, we don't get insurance, but otherwise that's their way of, you know, they've got to pay if they want it. Well, that's how intercepts run. You get, you get, char you get to, you collect the intercepts. The towns have to pay but, the but intercepts. Some, sometimes, intercepts is well, only a little bit of money. Right. Intercepts. I know. Yeah, right yeah. now it's, if the patient is insured, the flat fee for Greenfield is like 275 bucks. And, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times these intercept agreements will have, um, like a sliding fee, where if it's a Medicaid or Medicare patient, you know, we're not going to charge them 250 if they're only collecting $100. But to Kip's point, like, well, well maybe it's time that, no, flat fee. Like, if we're coming up here, you're calling us, then it's going to, you know, so. this and, this and real actual cost. Of well, like these guys said, you know, maybe these, the mayor doesn't realize the cost and they're not, you know, they're not paying any money because it's a private company. So why should our taxpayers subsidize it? So that's what I'm saying. If you have an agreement, say, you know, we're willing to help out. But it's going to cost you because right. it costs us. So. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it may lead you down the road of, okay, we're going to talk about this on ambulance and let's talk about fire service and let's talk about police and let's talk about whatever else that we do mutual aid for each other. So it may become a slippery slope. Uh, but again, but um, Sunland, Sunland has a police department. Conway has a police department. Deerfield has a police department. We all, we all, so our residents are already playing for that police service. And, and if, in in our fire, our, our fire trucks have gone to Montague, our fire trucks have gone to Greenfield, our, our fire department has Greenfield come down to help us and agents <coughs> come down to help us. So that, that's a shared, that's a shared responsibility. What I'm saying, we're supporting a for-profit organization right now. True. And, and that, and, 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 and you know, I saw, I saw that we had call to Charlemont, mm -hmm. right? I don't have a problem with that. Char Charmont is trying the best. They're, they're, they're Charmont running a problem right now, trying to keep their things staffed. They're doing everything they can. They're, they're in the same word, situation we were in a few years ago. I don't, because Charmont pays. Char Charmont, and, and, and the 32 runs to Conway, I, I think, I, I, I would say more power to us if, if we can help Conway, because Conway is putting dollars of their budget to help support their, their local people. And they, and they may came to, and, and I'll go back to the, to Gary Stone. You know, Gary Stone was the biggest opponent to, to formation of South County, EMS. And he tried everything in his, everything known to man to try to make it work. But he found out that you know, with everything, paying money, doing this, he, could, he couldn't make it happen. Right. Bobby, Bobby and Mary Ellen Hearn, I can't tell you how many runs those two made. And you know what? In every town in this valley yeah. saw the two of them come up to their doorstep. Yeah. Right? This didn't start because people didn't want to do it. This started because people couldn't keep up with the way it was growing. Right. And now we've seen it continue runs. to grow. Right. 1,200 runs. Come on. And I'm not saying, Tom, I'm not saying that we should stop. Oh, no, I, I, I just think we might have a conversation with Conway about, hey, sure. 
Yeah, and, and I, I think does this I make sense for you guys to maybe? And now they may be watching this saying, "Not in a million years." <laughs> Shut up, Edwards. And, and it's possible, but it's, that's a different right. conversation than we right, right. have with Greenfield. Yes. Well, and the answer may be, let's look at look at the issues where they're having. Look at the times where they're having problems getting people. And maybe it's some type of an agreement where we're going to cover part of the town between eight and four, and Highland's going to cover part of it between eight and four, and. Shelburne covers part of it between 8 and 4, and then they're going to do their own from right. 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. and just give their folks a break during the day where they don't have to worry about getting that respond. I mean, we can be creative about it, right? But well, that's a good idea. It, it all starts with a conversation, and it might be better to be creative with it like that than them trying to put on two people on their own to operate during those hours. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, right. I, again, that, that's going to be data driven. That conversation sure. is data driven. I mean, years ago when we all relied on Mercy Ambulance, and I'll go way back before BHA Ambulance, that was a service that was provided to the town of Greenfield and a number of other communities, but it was supported by the hospital. Because in the end, those patients primarily got fed into the hospital where the hospital picked up that care, was able to bill and continue for that. When all that stopped, and that gets sold to MediV, and now it's sold to another <coughs> private agency, the whole thing changes because the hospital there's no tie from the hospital out into the community, except through the local providers, but for emergency service wise, you know, now you've got two separate entities and you've got a private entity running the ambulance service, which back around 2000, Deerfield put a bid out. We got a, a bid back from Bay State, I think it was Bay State at that time, that said, we'll do it for free. I know. And the fear was you're gonna do it for free, but at some point, if the hospital stops providing an ambulance service, we're gonna be stuck with a private provider that we have no, no control over, or no, no power to say, you know, you're not responding quick enough, or you're not doing a good enough job. And at that point, to start a whole new service was gonna kill us, because it'd be three years in ramp up. So it's kind of, I was talking to Zach the other day, and this whole thing has kind of come full circle to where we said it was gonna wind up. And I think there's credit to a lot of folks in this room and a lot of people who've worked hard to put this together because we're seeing the fruits of the labor that went into it. And we're in a much better position today than we would be looking across the table at an AMR to provide service to our town and them telling us, we can't do it like you used to do it. You're going to have to pay us something because then you're going to scramble to get some type of coverage. Well, continuing on. Yeah, that's not the end of that conversation, I'm sure. No. Um, we've got a date set with Deerfield Elementary. We're going to go in and conduct a Stop the Bleed class for their um, staff um, during one of their um, training days, one of their faculty days. We've also, uh, we're going to be partnering with South Deerfield Fire on one of their drill nights this month. We're going to be doing a Stop the Bleed class for them. Um, so for who? South Deerfield Fire. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and just had a conversation with Matt the other day about maybe extending that to um, the sportsmen's clubs um, because I think that training could be very beneficial to people who might um, be more likely to be present for a gunshot wound or something like that or a bow and arrow wound or whatever happens at those things. So um, that's a train that we can offer for free here at South County. I'm an instructor. so. Happy to do that for the community. Now these schools, do they talk to you about any of these type of classes or is that something you just offer to certain schools? Well, or Homeland what? Security, <laughs> we, Homeland Security, yeah. um, we sponsored, well, Meg from, um, Meg Burke from, um, who's the head nurse for the, you know, Union 38. She came to Homeland Security and wanted uh, money to do the Stop the Bleed program. So we voted to support that. And then what's happened is Zach has followed through with, um, I mean, we had a huge turnout. I mean, it was a huge turnout. It was supposed to be here locally, and it ended up being at GCC because there were so many people. So um, it was wonderful, supported. And then um, Zach has followed up with, you know, this these programs so that, you know, well, people I'm have. Asking. I'm wondering yeah. if it's offered to the, all the town, you know, the three towns, the oh. elementary schools. 
Yeah, yeah, and I've been I'm in conversation Most of them with. Have took the original. Class. Yeah, if they don't take the initiative yeah. to ask for it, then yeah. is it no, still then, being? Then Zach follows through. So there's, yeah, there's a really good follow up, and people have the supplies. Yeah, on. and Union Thirty Eight. I've been, you know, I I talk to them. I go to all the school safety meetings and and these trainings with the schools yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So just that FaceTime and getting those mm -hmm. connections. Um, but it, it, there's a lot more conversation happening. There's a lot more things happening because of the outreach efforts from Zach, which is really exciting. And some of the money you can find through Homeland Security, but mostly it's just good follow-up, um, like this is an example, where Zach is doing further outreach. And uh, well, we've gotten supplies, gifted through supplies, yep. um, small grants, um, emergency grants uh, through MEMA. We have supplies around town. Um, and we were, there was extra money potentially, and so we were going to ask all the towns to put in as a joint grant. So, the, you know, all the police cruisers, all the fire trucks, um, the ambulances, different in schools, we're going to have all these little packs of stuff in case there was some kind of emergency. hemorrhage control things. The same, yeah. the same way we teach CPR and we have AEDs, now we're teaching stop the bleed and making sure that there's tourniquets and stuff like that available. So. Those are the things that are going to, even with a five minute response time, uh, six, six minutes, 55 seconds between Deerfield Center and Waitley for 2018 was our average response time. You'll, you'll die before we can get there in that time from a heart attack, from bleeding, severe hemorrhage. So th that's where we're targeting our community outreach to those types of, um, those types of trainings and equipment, so. All right, uh, uh, that draft budget that was dated 1120 hasn't changed. That was the one that I sent out um, last month. No changes there yet. I'm still expecting to hear back from Barbara about um, benefit costs and things like that. And usually my estimates, uh, historically my estimates have always been higher based on the calculations. So I'm expecting to see a decrease on that when those numbers get back. Um, and we did have two um, Full-time employees sustained injuries that resulted in being out of work. One was work-related, um, one was not, um, but those both happened back-to-back -back, uh, in the middle of December, so we were scrambling to fill 80 hours um, every week there. Um, for that first week and a half or so, uh, we did incur overtime just filling those shifts, um, but going further out, we ended December into January, um, those are all filled with per diems and part timers since we had enough time to um, to see that. So hopefully they will be back soon. They are on the mend, and I think that's it for my director's report. If there's any questions? Excellent. No, happy. Old business. Uh, if nothing on the budget, then there's the lease, lease agreement. Everybody's had a chance to look at that for the last three or four months. Anybody need a physical copy? Jonathan, do you need a copy? I've got another one. Okay. Oh, okay. We, we held off. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. So that you could be here. Um, comments? My only <coughs> comment slash concern is around the rent. And it's not so much the cost, and as I understand it, it goes strictly to capital needs of this building. Uh, and if I'm wrong about that, please let me know. I think you're wrong. I, you think I'm wrong? Well, I, I would say that that would be my major concern. Um, I, I, I applaud TIP's um, foresight. In, in saying, hey, look, we're going to collect rent on this building. It didn't cost us anything, so the rent, the rent is kind of a, um, it's a savings account to maintain the building in the condition that it's at. Um, but then, then we got some emails that says, well, not so quick. The town of Deerfield has to do this, and we have to do this, and we have to do this. So it's really not. It's really not established that we can do that yet. I missed those emails, I think, and that that gives me pause because it was always originally sold as capital. That and, well, that, and I, that, I I would say I think that's a great idea because that really 
Now, I understand how the state works. So if, if we have to change something because of the state, that's fine. But it would be nice if we could get a commitment that that's well, going to happen. Well, I think that Deerfield's commitment has always been the same. Uh, the, the process is a little different because, you know, being a little naive in the whole thing, I didn't understand it. Uh, but so all of that rent money that we collect would go into the general fund. And every year, the town would have to appropriate that money right. out of the general fund into this fund, similar to what Deerfield does with their uh, sewer things. You know, the, every year we have to, you know, we collect a half a million dollars. We have to appropriate that money into the sewer reserve to pay for the sewer. And that's the same process that this could go. Once that money was voted in, then it could be into its own, um, I'm not sure the appropriate name, enterprise fund or whatever fund. but. It, it would be that. But it wouldn't be just for capital, it would be for any of the maintenance that would go on with the, the building and stuff like that. And, 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 and Tom, that was my concern actually, because if, if the town suddenly decides, you know, we're, we're short by a couple bucks this fiscal year, we're gonna, and, and, and there seems no. to be, wait, 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 let me just finish the, the concern. Yeah. And, and it's not just me saying this, it's you hear it, is that, we're gonna and and, and Skems has seems to have a little bit of excess cash on hand here. So uh, and there's no forecast for the need to spend it. So we're gonna take X percent to cover other costs. And and technically that would be absolutely po possible. Sure. It it would be technically possible, but it would not be the spirit of what we intended to do. And I and I mean, I, I mean. There's and never I'm, any guarantee for anything, Jonathan. And, and, and I'm just, I'm just, uh, right. yeah. You know, when the state made a commitment to um, pay for the new elementary school, our elementary school, I, you know, you thought it was that was it. Mitt Romney came in and decided not to pay that year. So guess what? The town of Deerfield had to cough up its share of of the, um, you know, cost of elementary school. It's just, it's you know, right, but that's a little, that's, that no, analogy is a little different. No, I'm just saying that there's no guarantee. But the spirit of is that this building, we have a lovely situation, and we want to keep it up, and 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 we don't, and it's really hard to go to the towns to for capital money. So by paying this rent, we have maintenance. Maintenance needs to get done. It just gets done. The money's sitting there every year, so that stuff gets addressed immediately and and the building doesn't fall apart like most of our like your field buildings have problems i think that there's a we lot of different ways you can look at that and i've talked with people about the same issues in that you know the service is pretty new it's only been around three years but i'd ask Zach, you know on a scale of one to ten Zach, how how much in work one being the worst how much better is it being all in one building than being scattered in three or four locations you know uh, does the scale only go up to ten? Right. Yeah. I mean, just, just, no one's going to argue that. Okay. Yet. Okay. So, so, so here, prior to this, the, the Skims was paying over five thousand dollars a month, and none of us got anything. It was all just gone, you know. Uh, so now, at least here, we have uh, a good intention that this is money is going to be here for the future. You know. I think that's all you can do in state laws yeah. as far as right. money goes. Years ago, in Sunderland, we used to put away money for a fire truck year after year right. in good intentions. There was no actual fund where that money was, but when it came time to vote the money, you know, they kind of put money in their stabilization account or whatever it was at the time. So, Right, I, I, I get that. It's just that the, the, it's entirely possible. And, and the analogy, again, is it's... I know it wouldn't sit well in Waitley, and I can only speak for Waitley, if all of a sudden Deerfield General <coughs> Ops were being paid for by rent that the town was paying to, to the building when that wasn't part of the conversation that ever took place. And, and I agree with you. I, I mean, even li living in Deerfield, I would be upset with that too. Yeah, I, 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 right. I don't have to, you know, be outside. And I, I it's... Uh, I, I, I don't know, there's not a whole lot of, I guess, guarantee that right. you can do it. And it's our intention yeah. that this money is for this building to keep it in really good shape and to do improvements that we need. I Actually, I intend to come to this board for some money to put um, shelving 
in the garage for storage of our EDS supplies because they're in the senior center and at, at some point we're going to rehab the senior center or do something with the senior center and they're not in a good position and we had talked about putting giant shelving um, in the garage Zach had sort of done that and maybe we can do use our MAPCO money to um, you know buy the supplies or something and have Deerfield Academy build the shelving in a you know when they're on vacation or something whatever um, what supplies are you talking about? The our emergency dispensing oh. supplies, all the joint resources we have for the, our Frontier EDS. And um, they're sitting up in the senior center. We haven't had done our drive through um, EDS because we haven't had flu vaccine donations for a while. But, you know, um, we're, you know I'm going to put in for MAPCO. We, we've done all the inventory of um, vaccine supply. Um, capacity in the county and the idea is that we're going to put in for a vaccine refrigerator here um, you know that kind of thing uh, so we have capacity to store vaccine and be a distribution center for us down here in South County is I mean there's a lot that of Zach would use? Yeah, that, yes. and that's that's different that, yeah but that's, I know but I mean different. I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff that we intend to do with this building as as, as our four communities mm -hmm. and you know I mean, I, some of this money would go towards a little bit of that, like the shelving or something like that. Does it make sense once a year to ask the fiscal agent to provide a report? Um, oh, I would, have, I would have assumed that was well, an automatic. Yeah. Right after town meeting to see the, what was the... Vote. What was the, you know, how much money do we receive in rent and how much money is going into whatever account is ultimately set up? It would be a standard warrant article. Yeah, but, Just you know, like then, uh, town but if we're running out of... Here's the maintenance projects. I mean, Zach keeps you updated in his yeah. report of what's gone on. But at the end of the year, I kind of get a running total of <clears throat> boiler replacement this year was five thousand right. dollars. Cleaning the vents was two thousand dollars. We collected thirty six. The balance is twenty nine. It's now been moved over to this account. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's just a, a simple. Yeah. 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 And then at some point, it depending on what's there, it may need to be adjusted. I mean, I I, I hope the goal is to grow that account so that when we need a new roof on the place, the money is there to do the roof. Of course. Paving. And that or, is the entire intention. Yeah. So that we don't have to go out and the, the paving's lovely, but guess what? It needs to be repaved and excellent. But let's year. keep in mind, let's keep in mind that the, what's the, what's the uh, annual rent? $36,000. $36,000. This roof would cost what to replace? Well, it depends. <laughs> yeah, no. I, yeah. It should be about twelve thousand, but right. mine would be fifty thousand. <laughs> well, okay, that would. Um, but really but you get my point. I mean, it's no, just I, like I understand. You know, it's it's a I it's understand. a big number. No, it First is. couple of years, you're not going to spend a lot of that thirty six thousand dollars, and it adds years, up, right? You know? <laughs> but but it's it but it does, and, and allow me to tie this also to the the fee that the town of Deerfield's getting to to be the fiscal agent mm -hmm. and how much is that dollar amount i think it's up to 70 in the latest right budget. that's a, that's the equivalent of a full-time salary a, a very healthy full-time um, salary yeah. and maybe and, maybe and it, you would we would shift out and do it separately i i worry that that's a lot of money because it's it's not taking one fte to 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 be the, your administrative assistant Essentially, and, and that's not the right term, but right. It, right. it's not taking one FTE. And again, we, you know, I know what you guys, what the town of Deerfield pays for its its town administrator. In that first year we were organizing, they did a lot more work than they're doing this year. Right. It, it just that was the numbers are just get the thing off the ground and get everybody's benefits and yeah all and absolutely and i'm not and i'm not debating that at all but well, i mean the no, town of Whitley could do it a lot cheaper than seventy two thousand dollars a year well the, the but why reason, would you the, but the why reason would you? this is standard charges jonathan we've been over that but at some point when our budget is getting bigger like this and this is a percentage then maybe it is time to have a separate person over here well if you go back, if you go back to the original report on why we we did what we did, the reason that we that if you will, to go back to the Baxter report, Baxter said that 
there, there's three different options, four different options that you could use, okay? One of the options though, would be that we'd hire our own person. That probably wouldn't be beneficial to you because of the expense that you would, that would incur. Not to say it wouldn't be the best, but it wouldn't be financially responsible. Now, when we first started the thing, we never thought we'd be paying $70,000 a year for a host agency. That's right. We, we thought, and, and, and so the economy was, the economy of having a, a host community, quote unquote, a host community, was that it would be a charge, but it would be less than, way less than a full-time, trying to hire a full-time person. And when you, you, when you look at 70000 now you think about 70000 you know, take away 40% take away forty for, for Benny's, right? So you take away 40% of that 70, so you're, you're down, what, 36, 38,000? Yeah. There's a lot of admins that... Well, that's what I was just going to say. I mean, you know, there'd be a town of Deerfield employee, and from my quick knowledge, they would be getting somewhere in the $28 an hour range that that person would not keep busy here 40 hours a week. It would still cost the service nearly $70,000. Now, if this person happened to be a young woman and her husband and three kids came on the insurance, it would cost us, of course, you know, right. and, and so, you know, it, it's, it's a big but, what if, you know. But, I've, but I guess I've never seen, and maybe it exists and maybe I just haven't seen it, and I apologize if I've just never seen it, but I've never seen the breakdown of, of the hours Required. There's not. Okay. Ba basically, what they did is they said 10% of, and they just listed the right. positions. And okay. they said 10% of the town administrator, 10% of the treasurer, 10% of the accountant, 10% of the. Right. And, and we Based know on that, budgets compared to the overall. Right. And town. we know yeah. that, that the town administrator, I'm just using that as an example, doesn't spend 10% of her time. No, no. No, we're nowhere close. No. So I guess that's it's, my point. It, it, wasn't, it goes up and down, though. I mean, when there's personnel issues, we use our lawyer and we use our town administrator. And that has happened, Jonathan, multiple times in the past. Oh, okay, but again, Waitley could do it Oh Well, then that's fine. Let's, you make an offer that would come up and be comparable, and then we as a board would, would vote, or the board would vote on it. I believe the fee was set on 10% of some type of an expense number. Yes. Maybe it was labor right. and it was, it was calculated. Mm -hmm. It was a calculated, it was calculated um, industry the, kind of kind well, of. Well, the three subject. town administrators got together and looked at the numbers and kind of came back to us with this because we struggled with this when we were starting off. I know. How do we figure it out? What's the cost? What's it going to be? And the town administrators seemed to be arguing about it. Said, you know what? You guys take the pro, take it, go study it, and come back to us with the recommendation. And when they came back with the recommendation at the time we started, and things may have changed. I believe Sunderland Sand came to us and said, we don't have the capacity to handle what you're looking for us to do. And Waitley came Sam back and said, we didn't have the capacity. Right. So to your point, if things have changed and there is capacity. Then no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying that for three, four years of, of, of service delivery and experience running the organization, having the host, host community, yeah. I think we have a better sense of that, of the, the, perhaps the 10% that the town administrators came back to is a bit high. That's my point. I've always felt it's a bit high, but that's because, y you know, your situation is not even keeled. You have, s you have things happen where it's very intense, and there are legal fees, and then we've paid legal fees in the, f um, in the past, and, you know, um, it just overall, when things are quiet, it's quiet. When it's not, it's not, and that's what the costs overall cover the ups and downs of, of personnel, of the situation. And I guess I just think that perhaps... We're kind of, kind of getting off track. Yeah. We can rattle that bee's nest another day, or you guys can do yeah. it on the I mean, sidebar I'm, and as selectmen to selectmen and say, hey, I don't like this. Yeah. But let's get back to the lease agreement. Do we think that the town of Deerfield is going to have an annual uh, article on the warrant that's going to say we're we going to put $36,000 yes. in this yes. account and... Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll develop the article. Well, this year won't be 36000 because it just started in July, but whatever the dollar amount is. Well, it'll take a year before. We'll, you know, we'll yeah. have um, Lisa, our Lisa Mead, our lawyer, write up a standard article that 
you know, will circulate uh, yeah. for the, this warrant and will give you an idea of what would be the, the annual kind of warrant article. I'm not sure if it would be exactly the same uh, after, because it, the, this is a startup year. Yeah. But it would be very similar to what we would So be. 10 years from now that something comes up, yeah. the committee at that point will say, hey, I think I remember. Right. Those guys that were on the committee a long time ago. Didn't think of this. <laughs> I mean, it, if you think about it, no matter which way you really do, it's a win for all our communities because if we didn't get this the way it happened and we paid a million or something, we'd be paying six or seven thousand a month and it would just be going back to the bank. We would have nothing set aside. Oh, no one's so debating that everything would be a... Well, you know, I just, I, again, I just want to be consistent. I, I know when we were talking about going into the... Uh, the Western Mass Library, there was a number of people that were upset that what the town of Whiteley was trying to take advantage of us by, by charging us $40,000 a year for rent. And, and I just want to be consistent. And, and I'm going to say, and again, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with 36, to me the 36, if it's going to the way Kip proposed, I think it's a great, is a great thing. But we just have to be consistent. You know, it's, it's you know, and, and it, it can't, and, and this is the whole the whole thing. You can't be afraid to have these conversations. And, and it says, well, it, it 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 wasn't all right for somebody else to do it, and now it's all right for us to do it. We can't do business that way. It's we we have to try to be fair to one another. We're 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 all in this together. Um, and and I would hope if if ten years from now, if we're still around, um, and we look and we have three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in the bank um, for because of the town of Deerfield been voting at annual town meeting and it's in and in, in the the town of Deerfield says well you know what you we haven't can, been we using can, it we haven't been using it they don't need it they don't need it so we're going to keep it I would say well maybe we need to take and readjust the the rate and move it to eighteen thousand dollars a year and, and but I don't I don't have a problem with the 30 I don't have, again I don't have a problem with the 36 as long as there's a commitment that we put that the money's going to the thing. I think we all feel very strongly that we would want to adjust it if, in fact, we weren't using the money, because yeah. it's taxpayer money to begin with, yeah. and and the idea is to have our own fund so we can do our own vote, our own repairs, and not have to go to the towns, at you know, because all of us are, have such tight budgets. But I think if, in fact, we are able to be good stewards and to be keep our building maintained that there would be an adjustment down the line. And I think another way that I, I think of the future is more than likely, I mean, hopefully we'll all be here but not involved in this in 20 years, but the people who replace us, uh, if, if Deerfield comes along and does exactly as Tom says, you know, it's going to cause a lot of hard feelings. And what would happen is that group of people would be faced with kind of what we were a year ago that this might just blow up and then you got to go home and think about if this blows up how detrimental is going to be to all of us so you know what we're going to have to work this out and exactly. you know and, and and hopefully the people that come behind us will will realize the importance of this and, and and make it work we have one of the most reliable ambulance services in the whole western mass i mean people ask me all the time when I have go to these meetings all over Western Mass, how are you doing it? How? Are, oh, why are you so successful? And it, and you know we can't seem to get it off the ground. And it's just you know it's because we all stuck together and we all hung in there. And we all are trying to solve this for our, our communities. And that's mm -hmm. I, I mean so I have faith. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Right. Well, but see. I have faith that we're going to stick together and we will keep going. And that, and that we do have good intentions. No one is trying to rob anybody. See, my questioning it today, I think the fear is... Yeah. But well, my, 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 my point is, to, is, is so totally opposite, I, I guess. What, what I'm trying to say is that, you ha that we have a, this operation has a unique ability <coughs> at the present time to set something in place that every municipality would love to have. What is that? We have a we have a rent going into the maintenance of the <coughs> building going forward in perpetual motion. There's going to be funds if if you have a problem with the sewer line. You got on the sewer line over here. 
we have a problem with a sewer line, we can go out and dig it and we can get it fixed. If we have a problem with a roof, we can, we can get it fixed. And we don't, and, and, and I don't have a problem going back to the, the, the taxpayer because I'm gonna go to the taxpayer and say, the taxpayer for Deerfield, hey, we gotta fix our building. And guess what? We have, we have funds available. We have a pro you know how much those overhead doors cost? Yeah. Right? They're expensive doors because they're very expensive. They're well-built doors with things. We don't Some have to worry. Century if they list the guest, lift the guest moratorium, maybe and you want to get put the street gas in. Right. right, right. But but you we have you have a unique you have a unique opportunity to have a funding source to maintain and operate a building going forward. This is a golden opportunity. That that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It, yeah. And, mm -hmm. And, no, and I totally get we, you know from UMass or, or any of these colleges or universities where my husband's worked at. You know, that you get these donations of a new building, but then they don't increase the maintenance budget to You're cover for three, maintenance for the right. new built for the new building. You're gonna get so, three or four percent every year from how much a building to operate the building for the first year or two, then all of a sudden, well we can't afford to keep giving you that money to do that. Look at the high school. Look at the high school. And the other thing you gotta remember is this is a building that operates twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. I agree. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more wear and tear on this building than any other building in town because of the well, hours that it's operating. The only thing that I might disagree is that you're right, it is operated all the time, but there's not 300 people through this. Correct. Thing, you know, Correct. So I, I would hold yeah. Correct. No, 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 no. Yeah, but things like you know, <laughs> light yeah. switches, there's not people yeah. you know, all the other things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll drive yeah. here at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. There was a party going on. Yeah. Yeah, Just yeah. the lights in the windows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah the red lights was weird. <laughs> no, that was a fire department. What were you doing up at well, the <laughs> Somebody mentioned gas. You know, being the, the frugal individual I am, we should think about buying our propane tank because there are other places we could buy propane for probably 30 and to 40% less than what we're paying for. And maybe we could use that for the first 36000 to buy a propane tank. But also, how about some, um, you know, solar panels somewhere or something? You yeah. know, come on. There's well, you're right. I mean, those are the kinds of things we should be really thinking yeah. about. I know. We should be able to cut our operating costs um, from this rent money, too. So, whatever. Okay. Keep talking for another couple minutes, Gary. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> we can have a vote. <laughs> what else you got to say, John? We choose to go to the moon. No. <laughs> Not because. In this decade. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. They're on the dark side of the moon. I keep singing Pink Floyd now. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Uh, so, I. Time, the, time out. Time out. Time out. Okay. Time out. We'll be back in a minute. You know, when Zach mentioned that six <laughs> minutes and 55, cent, 55 second average response time, Yeah. when we first started, we were at 717. So we've gone from 717 to 711 to 655. So those response times, right. it, it, it may not seem like a whole <coughs> lot, 22 seconds, but when you're the person who's called, Absolutely. those when you're 22 seconds seem like yeah. hours. It, it, right. it, thank you. That go back to the original thing about having the people available and not, right. not backing up a paid Right, and, and and that was why I was talking about the, doing the Conway run times because, to, and then actually give that data to Conway. Well, we've made it to you in I, pick a number, whatever whatever it was. Well, let's read one of the other meetings so we can vote on this thing. Oh, <laughs> you asked me what else I had to say. I well, know he's back now. <laughs> he's back. We gotta oh, cut the van. I'm gonna Ready? stain. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Gary. Yeah, Gary. We're waiting for you. You better vote go. this time. I'm gonna watch Jonathan. Make a motion. <laughs> Make a motion. We accept the lease agreement as presented. I'll second it. I'll second. I'll, okay. Any further discussion? You really want to ask? Yeah. <laughs> All you in favor? really want to ask? He asked him. He doesn't want it. We asked him. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is that unanimous? Yes. Yeah. For present? Or, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a vote and Matt doesn't have a vote. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Neat. Congratulations. How's it feel? It was good after three or four months. We got that done. <laughs> Anything further? Um, the new vehicle. So, so, are we, are we progressing with the new vehicle? I submitted, uh, because there was a deadline, I submitted capital requests based on the numbers that I presented with the budget at the November meeting. But that, I mean, that's how much movement there's been. I mean, nothing's ordered or anything like that. 
Okay. We kind of beat it around the bush in November. We didn't give a vote. We were talking about replacing the international instead of sinking any more money into it. Because How much money are we sinking into it? A lot. And we've been about keep $12, throwing $12, money into a year. It. On average, and it's been an unreliable list. It keeps so. breaking down, right. and you have to, and it, it has to be towed to Springfield, which entails ties up people, and it costs mm. a lot of money. What's a new one cost? Two hundred and fifty. So, so what are you looking for <coughs> trade in? I don't have a number back yet on that. Okay, but, but, but really somewhere like the seven to twelve, I can, seven I can to twelve thousand dollars. Two thousand four. Right. Saw that. A two thousand four F. 450 with 123,000 miles is on Municipid right now. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's got still going to be up there for another 31 days, and they're up over three thousand dollars, which is crap. Huh? I know. So I I think it'd be very interesting to see what what you have because Municipid is probably you you probably. You know, I, I don't know what's going to be fast forward in 30 days, what the final bid is going to be, but um, I, I would think for what, what's the international, a 2007? 2010. A 2010 that has how many miles on it? 140, 130. So we're getting rid of that one first and keeping the other one for a couple extra years, switching around. Why do I think these things should get more than 140,000 miles? They should. Should, but there's a, the international was a junk to begin with. It was not a reliable truck to uh, to you know, purchase. I, but part of it is, I mean, that truck is designed to deliver beer. So when you do your truck check and you idle it up in the morning and then you leave it idling and you're going 30 miles an hour all day long, it's a perfect truck for that. I think the issue with the international is that it's sitting with a cold block in the bay right now. And then when we need it, you fire it up, and then it's on, on the way to an emergency. You go flying um, to an emergency. It sits in front of a house. 10, 15 minutes, and you get into it, you go flying to the hospital. Then it sits at the hospital for a half Shut hour. What? Well, I think the, I don't know exactly all the issues, but I think it's a poor design, because the problem that you continually have is with high-pressure transmission cooling lines. And you know, the, 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 yeah. their their pump is not designed properly. The hoses aren't designed, and it, it's frustrating for me to sit back and they just keep replacing with the same old thing. You know, I mean, it, there are people around that maybe aren't the, the the dealer who would look at that and say, okay, these lines just aren't strong enough. You need to have stainless braided stainless steel lines, and this coupling is no good. You re and mm -hmm. then that truck probably could be fixed, so it doesn't happen. But it's the same weak point, and it just keeps getting. Same yeah, they just stuff they another week yeah, part. Oh, we have put, in there. Exactly, and that's a bad not thing. improving anything. Right. But I, I don't know, did we ever decide if it's absolutely not practical to reuse that box? We didn't have a vote. We didn't have a vote. Well, I, I know that, well, I, if, I, if my memory serves right, you the said box that the box fit was, wouldn't the fit. Future. But I, I looked at the, the chassis on both, they're, they're pretty straight, so I don't know Kip, why. My, in my professional opinion, it is absolutely not an option to remount that box on a new chassis. It would have to go on another international. The box itself is old. It's not, you know, we've, we've designed a new truck to be focused on patient and provider safety. That international box is not. Um, when you when you duplicate trucks, cognitive load of the providers go down, everything is in the same spot on every truck, there's commonality in training and, and, and those things. If we just move that box over, it's in the middle of the night, you get in a truck and you have to get your bearings again, things aren't in the same place in different trucks. Um, and the, the cost savings for a remount, um, I have to grab those numbers again, but it's negligible, especially considering it's going back on an international. Um, well, no, that you could put it on another truck. The, it's not geared exactly toward an international. The, the, and the conversations I've had with the remount specialist is that there, the option for that box is another international. If it was on a Ford, they could do a Ford, they could do a Dodge, they could do a Chevy. All those, they can make work. If it comes off an international chassis, they're like, your only option is to put it on another 4300. And we don't, certainly don't want to buy another one of those. No. We're yeah. not buying one of those. That yeah. is not how well, we want to spend all the money. Unless you're going to be without it for 
quite a while. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, well, well that's the other thing. If we order, if we order a different yeah. truck, then we just trade it out the day that it shows up. If they remount this, then we're out that truck for eight months. So two fifty, and and what would be the lease on it? Have you thought about that? A lease? Haven't haven't looked at anything. Uh, I'm wondering what what it, what the out of pocket's going to be on an annual basis until it's paid off. I don't feel like spending. I don't feel like making it a one year buy. I don't think. Well, what we're doing is shuffling up the rotation. We're just. We're, but how are we going to pay for it? Is my question still. Yeah. It's out of retained earnings. The, the next truck replacement would be due in 21. With our annual money that we're setting aside in retained earnings, it would be 2021. Moving it up, and that was budgeted for like a $285,000 truck. Yeah. So moving it up a year and only spending 250, it's only an additional, I forget what it is. I don't want to quote something that's wrong. Um, so but it's, 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 I, I get it. Yeah, it's, it's a small amount. Um, so you're going to go to the three towns for the difference, or what do you? No, no, no. It would all be coming out of retained earnings. And we have that in return. Yeah, we do. We do. Oh, do we have nothing left after that? Uh, we're getting down pretty low. Yeah, yeah. It's um. Oh yeah, no. It's a uh, uh, the contribution um, out of retained earnings in FY20 would be seventy six thousand, and we were already planning on doing a fifty one thousand dollar addition. Um, so what's that twenty five an additional twenty five thousand dollars out of retained earnings? Um, the what what we didn't want to do, Jonathan, is keep putting money into this international. I I totally get it. I'm just wondering how it's yeah. going to get paid for and what's the, what it's going to leave us with. Yeah, um, we would have that plus um, the application towards the assessments. So lowering the assessments, so mm -hmm. keeping the assessments at the same, um, and then that additional uh, community EMS rapid response vehicle. That would deplete the retained earnings certified from FY18, so whatever would be certified from FY19. What's your guess? I don't even want to guess. I don't know. Well, you got it. I'm, I'm so bad. Otherwise, how do we make a decision if we don't have any sense of... Put put the financials together. For, yeah, for us. I don't want to. Yeah, put them together and email them out so that we yeah. can review them before the. Yeah, I don't want to say something and then have it be. But well, you know, you, you know, you're, you're this, not going to get that this question comes asked down to, finance to, right. this this is, board, so. Yes, but this also comes down to our, our collection amounts and what we are collecting. I mean, it's not anything unusual is happening, but maybe we can figure out how we can get our collection rate up higher. You know, by going to a different, um, you know, standard with, you know, I don't know if we can do Comstar's like next level, or because we have a we have about six hundred thousand that's owed to us right now. Yeah, and we're never gonna get see it. Yes, we are. Not all of it. Well, not all of it. You never get a hundred percent. But we we are pretty good about. We're in the eighty five. We're in the mid low to mid. 80s in our collection rate, yeah. but what we what we probably need to do is see if there's a, any ability to have sooner collection on some of the you know follow up. Um, so the know, question is, are we still going to be able to put enough against the budget and by the end once at the same time in 20? The in follow up fiscal year, FY21, FY21. No, we're fighting the ones in 20, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we will certainly the the amount of money that we're applying towards retained earnings um, in eighteen, nineteen, and then in twenty is so in twenty it's two hundred and thirty one thousand. Um, we will certainly have that left over in retained earnings from. FY19 for FY21. And we sort of wanted to say that we keep about 100 because you never know what. The rainy day. Oh, absolutely. You need a stabilization. Yeah. Right. So we're running around 100. But again, once you start collecting the rent and you put the rent towards, you know, uh, transfer the rent over, 
then you have some sort of stabilization there too. So you, maybe you don't feel yeah. as. Um, Why would you say that stabilization? Because it's no, you're because the money's just sitting there. When you're when you're transfer from the town, when the town yeah. transfers in the Warren article to yeah. the scams. Yeah. Okay, so that's into the maintenance fund. And so what you're doing is you're building up a capital, basically a capital stabilization fund for the building. Right, but and that's not for the service. No, but there's nothing in our bylaws here that says that, you know, you can't use it in a, as an emergency. So You could borrow against it, too. Yes, you could borrow against it, whatever. So the idea is that then you're not as panicky about having the hundred thousand dollars in the bank to cover you in a, for a situation where say we had no runs or all Medicaid pay or Medicare patients something like that and, and our private insurance percentage went way down for whatever reason um, I mean it's just one of those things you have to be careful on how you collect because it's not it's not a it's not an even collection. It's, you know, you're like this all the time. <clears throat> okay, so Zach will run the want to change that collection in politics uh, to go down. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you never know. The uh, right. I be. mean, what if that would be a terrible disaster? disaster? That would kill us. That would kill us. So, I mean, you have to have some cushion for that kind of. So, Zach, you'll run the numbers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, and again, I just have a problem that we're. We're putting our. We had a we had a plan of every five years buying them. Families, I know. Okay, and now now we're going to go boom boom boom. Then what's going to happen? Well, hopefully we're buying better equipment that we can. Oh, okay, but and, and again, we'll have so to revisit that because just, we're doing more, more my, calls now too. I know, but just from just from my experiences, all of a sudden we're going to hear in three years. Look at all the money you have in retained earnings. Why do you have all that money in retained earnings? And, and who's going to stand up and say, "Well, that to buy our next, that's to buy our next ambulance." Well, when's that going to be? Well, the ambulance will last 15 years, so it won't be for another 12 years. So you're going to tell us you're going to keep putting? A, you already got this one. You're going to put that. I I just see that. I just see the 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 conversations occurring right now. Sure. Well. And I mean, if if we had like we did a year or so ago, if you have, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars in retained earnings, then you just do an adjustment to the allocations from the communities, uh, because you don't need to have that kind of money. Right. And I, I think that we're I all. Back well, you years. do if you do if you if you're going to be replacing three ambulances in five years. Well, we're not. We're looking at replacing two. Well, we just replace one. That one's. You know, but, but, but Tom's but Tom's point is, if you right. buy them back to back, right. relatively speaking, right. in 15 years, right. you're, you're going to do it again. I, again. Right. Right. Yeah, I my take on that is, if we have a truck that we need to replace either right now, which is the case, or maybe next year at the most, then like that's the reality with that. I don't know, you're right. I mean, like in 12 years and 15 years, are we gonna stack ourselves up? And then when right. we get there, we're gonna have to figure out, okay, you know, well, what's our plan now? You're gonna, have three 15, you're gonna have three 15 year old vehicles at the same time, Zach. Yeah, well, right now, so you don't you know, give yourself right. that option. Yeah, you, when we came into the option. service, we we were already stacked up with old trucks. I mean, it was it was inevitable that we were we were going to run into a situation, the first time around, where we were going to have trucks tiring out close together. The well, but but that that's why that's why what I think Kip has a point, because if you spend less money now. You buy a used vehicle, buy buy a buy a um, something that that's good for seven years mm -hmm. instead of a brand new vehicle. Then all of a sudden you may have to replace that vehicle again, mm -hmm. but you save that you save that money and you and you and you you know you 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 you're keeping you're keeping what a service space. Is giving a, what it's service tough is to find a good used. I was just going to say what unless it, somebody what service is, is getting somebody else somebody out there has got a lease that they're getting rid of, but I don't know if anybody know. does leases. I mean, that's a tough. Everybody's which, international. Which ambulance is the international right now? So it's number two, second line. Yeah. It goes in between second line and third line, whichever truck is more reliable that day. So the third one, the third line is, is, is the any oldest. more reliable than? Uh, it's slightly more reliable now that we replaced all the injectors and a fuel pump and all that stuff. 
Hey, so, it was a fine name once when I had it. I don't know. <laughs> so, but could, so could you just swap those? Here's one of those two. Uh, yes, I mean, that's what we've been doing. But both those trucks, they're, they're tired that whichever one is, is like second one out, usually spends about three or four weeks and then has a, has a mechanical issue. So like we've been, we've been Every going Every three or four weeks? I'd, I'd have to pull the records, but I've got an album of ambulances on tow trucks. You're doing a lot of calls. No, I know, I know. I'm just, it's just mind numbing. What brand body is on the Ford? What's that ambulance body, do you know? The new, yeah. well, the brand new one is a PL Custom. PL Custom, and what's yeah. the, in, the international one? Uh, Lifeline. Lifeline. And the one I have is a different manufacturer. Right. Horton, yeah. It's okay. Um, it typically, as those trucks come out, different manufacturers innovate, and who's got something that looks to be the best, what you're looking for, cost, dealer, you know, there's a whole bunch of factors that go into at the point that you buy it. I, taking off what you said earlier, if it's the same problem over and over again, is the international dealer just putting the OEM hoses on it for liability reasons because that's right. all they can do? Would we be better to have someone like Chuck at the highway garage take a look at it? Could he put braided hoses on it? Or, or I don't know enough about the mechanics to make no, those decisions, but, right. but I know no, we talked about this before and there was a whole hang up about how do we charge Chuck's time and how do we figure that out? And well, I mean, it's not There's also a liability sure. issue on emergency vehicles and this is certification, yeah. certification for emergency, vehicle emergency vehicle vehicles. Okay. But there's, a, there's I, it's one thing if you're changing oil, but there's another thing if you're doing something to the performance. Right, but there, there are, you know, there are truck dealers around that you know, uh, do make modifications to vehicles and their work is certified. I mean, Absolutely. one of the, you know, just like people who build snow plow frames and stuff, yep. they're all certified by the state and they go through engineering and stuff like that. So, you know, you can get that type of stuff done, you know. Have you researched leasing at all? Uh, I have not, no. I do know that sometimes, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, I, I think as far as leasing goes, I mean, could one of the communities like Deerfield, or we could rent, I mean, I'm sorry, we could borrow the money and pay for the ambulance over a course of three or four years instead of all at once. Yeah, but you still get yeah. the, the, yeah. the longevity issue. Yep, you do. Um, Zach submitted the stuff by the deadline to the Capital Improvement Committee, which is meeting tonight and is just starting organizing. So um, at our next meeting, we should really be making a decision so that the Capital Committee can make a decision on the EMS because at some point, Zach is going to have to do a presentation to them and they will have to make a recommendation. So we need to make a sort out what we want mm. Zach to present to the Capital Improvement in the, at, by the next meeting. So um, Zach, you would be able to do like the leasing option, um, do some more pricing. I know you did ballpark stuff, but maybe you can make it more definitive um, so we can make a decision, vote a decision, so that we could go forward at the Capital Improvement Committee if necessary. Otherwise, we would just withdraw it, you know, if we choose not to do that. But, I mean, it's just my feeling that it's so disruptive. It's a waste of staff time. It's a waste of time and money to go down to Springfield and get it towed every time and to keep doing repairs, and it, I mean, to have it break down is just disgusting. I mean, that's not the whole purpose. We're not in, I mean, we, we need to respond, and you have to have reliable equipment. So and just we cut the cost. 15 years is the correct right. time that we want to, that might be a little long for the amount of calls that we're doing for. Right. And maybe well, I worry about well, whether it will it pass inspection more than anything. Right. Um, so what we have to do is maybe we need to adjust what we're putting aside every year for the ambulance. I mean, we're putting aside 51,000. Um, maybe we need to, you know, up it to 65 or something and, you know, adjust our timeline. Well, we made a lot of um, those investments in the power loads and the safes and things like that already. And, and those are the high ticket items that get transferred over. That's why this, this newer truck is $35,000 less than the last one. So... Um, and remember, when we base 15 years on an ambulance, we're basing it on numbers initially 
where we talked between 800 and 1,000 calls. Now we're at eclipsing 1,000. And those are only the calls, the individual patient calls. They're not counting the fire standbys and some of the other incidents right. that we're going to, which drive the numbers even higher. So to the point that was made earlier, it may be time to look at, is it 15 years the right number, or does it need to be less? Right. And that's, and that's what we have to... We have to adjust that as part of our budget, but we also need to, you know, sort it out so Zach can do some kind of presentation. Sure. Now, also, what's the uh, life expectancy on like that power left and stuff like that? I mean, we talking now. You can yeah, change yeah. it over, but yeah. about ten years down the road, you might get one swap out of it. But yeah, will you get a third one? Yeah, I don't know. Probably not a third, but yeah. but yeah. those. I mean, from the international, certainly that's only a few years old. I'm thinking at least a decade on those things. Um, but they're all brand new. They're all brand new. Right now. Um, but I also hope that in a decade when they're old and tired, there would be a better thing out. <clears throat> this is where, Tom, to your point earlier, what's with all this money, where's all the money going? And this is all feeds into that money conversation of it's a growing, evolving service. That We're learning. As much as we have costs nailed down today, those costs are going to change as we go in the future, as mm -hmm. EMS changes, equipment changes, and as call volume continues to increase. And state requirements change, yeah. potentially. And, and, I do, and, and, and I just think that, and again, my opinion is that when you run a budget, you, sh you, can't be, you can't be adverse to looking at every expenditure every year and how you're doing things. Just because we did something this way last year doesn't mean that we have to do the same thing next year. Right. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's why you have to have... And, and, to ha and it's okay to have a a uh, um, a conversation, and, and it could be a lively conversation sure. of pluses and minuses. And 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 you can't. And, and again, my my whole thing about an ambulance. I'm glad you say it. Maybe you have to reconsider your. Does an ambulance last 15 years? Yeah. That's what we. All right. Does a roof last 20 years? I don't know. I, I know some roofs that you, know, you could get a bird, bird, dull bird roof on our grammar school have to be replaced after seven years or ten years or something like that because the shingles were defective. And guess what? They'll give you they'll give you the new shingles, but you have to pay to strip and put the new ones on. So you don't know what's going to happen. But you can't be afraid to have the conversation. No, I, I think the conversation is good and it's healthy. You need to yeah. have it. Yeah. I, I think you know, part of my Part of my overall challenge has always been the fact that people look at money in the bank and think you're robbing the taxpayers. And it's like, you know, it's not robbing the taxpayers, it's planning for the future. And we've had a history in Deerfield of we build a building, we don't spend the money to maintain the building, and then we gotta come back in 15 or 20 just, years for it's capital not just to Deerfield. do it all It's every it's every, time. It's, it's think every well, time. The the conversation has spread, but it, it I know that in, in Deerfield we we're I might be a lone thing, but we're heading for some real big expenses. Oh, we are. And I mean, you know, we, we've yet to really nail a priority list, but, you know, our sewer system is definitely a priority because you can talk about schools, you can talk about emails. When you can't flush a toilet, yep. everything stops. Oh, yeah. oh I agree. You know, and, and, and that's that's really hate to put and, the money just in happened there, today. But basically, but, that's, that's you know, what people, it is. people in Deerfield are looking at no, a $2,000 a year increase, you know, if this thing goes through. I mean, that's that's huge. Yeah. You know, and that's. That's just the beginning. Oh, right. And we're all, all three towns, when the school comes, they're looking for $1.6 for three consecutive years for just updates to their tracks and bleachers and gym floors and stuff. And, you know, it's, so there's a lot of... Yeah, you want a gym floor, you want to be able to flush a toilet. Exactly. What? I thought you looked at that gym floor already and told them they're two cents worth. I lost. Oh, oh sorry. Anything else to come before the board? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye.